Hey there, let me show how to use javascripting to script WinDebug. In my previous video, I showed how to write a simple script in WinDebug. In that video, the commands within the script were just the meta commands that WinDebug can run. WinDebug also supports using JavaScript, which is a bit more verbose, but has a lot more functionality. Let's get into it with an instance of WinDebug that is waiting at a breakpoint. The program being debugged is not important. We are just going to use it to run scripts. This part of the screen is WinDebug, which is waiting at the breakpoint. And this part of the screen is a text file in which we are going to put our code and run as a script. So let's start with something simple. Let's start with hello world. JavaScripting is a bit more verbose. The host object has a member, which is the diagnostics object, which has a function debug log with the string hello world. When this line is run, it will print the value hello world within WinDebug. This line of code is not within any function and is within the root of the file. This means that this line will be run immediately when we run the script. We run the script by using the script run meta command. Let me just save the file and perform script run. So the syntax is pretty simple. It is just script run followed by the full path to where the file is on the hard disk. Observe that the output of the script, hello world, has executed. There we are, hello world. And there's a few more lines over here that says that the script was successfully loaded and there's no main. I will cover shortly in this video what exactly does it mean by having no main. But the loading of the script is pretty important. There is some manipulation which I will cover later in this video as well. WinDebug is capable of running JavaScript due to a plugin. There is this plugin called JS Provider. This plugin actually provides the capability for WinDebug to run JavaScript. If this plugin does not load, you can actually load JS Provider by just running load followed by the path to where JS Provider is. In my case, when I run a script, it just loads automatically. But if it doesn't load, just check on your machine where the JS provider plugin is and load it manually. Now, when we ran the script earlier over here, there was a message saying that there is no main. What exactly does this mean? Well, let's enhance the script so that there actually is a main. Let's add the actual main of the script, which is the function initialize script and invoke script. I'm not sure why the functions are not called main, but this is how it works. The root code is executed first, followed by initialize script, and then invoke script. Let's just run this script and see the results. So first I save it, and then I will just execute it as a script run. There we are, we get hello world, which is hello world, we get initialize script, which is initialize script. We get the line that says successfully loaded. This is because after initialize script, the script is considered as loaded. And then finally we get invoke script, which is the last line over here. Now, because the JavaScript engine is a modern JavaScript engine, I can actually write modern JavaScript syntax. This syntax, for example, is a Lambda function. I can create the function log which is basically just calling host diagnostics debug log with a message. Let me just go ahead and update the script so that I use my Lambda function and run it again. So if I run it again like that, there we are, we get initialize script and we get invoke script. JavaScripting also gives the flexibility that we can execute functions and even export functions from the script. Let's add a function like that the function do something and execute the script. When we run the script, we see that the function is not invoked. Only the initialize script function and the invoke script function is invoked automatically, but any other function is not invoked. However, the script is loaded into memory. What we can do is we can actually see the list of scripts that have already been loaded and from this list, we can see that our script and in the bottom over here is also loaded. If we wanted to, 
we can actually unload a script by using script unload. Let me just grab the uh, name of the script and that removes the script and we can reload a script by just running script load. Once loaded, we can run individual functions. The syntax is a bit more complex, but once the script has been fully loaded, it is possible to execute any function that we want within the script. The first thing we do is we run dx debugger state scripts. What this does is it actually looks at the debugger scripts, the loaded scripts, and finds the actual script that we need to execute. To execute a function, the syntax is pretty long. What we do is we run dx followed by debugger state scripts. This is where all the scripts are. The name of the script contents followed by the name of the function. So in this case, we are going to run the do something function. There we are, do something, which comes from this function. That is exactly the same as log do something. One of the advantages of running functions like this is that we can pass in parameters. Let's go ahead and do that. So I have modified the function so that I have a parameter, param1, which is being passed into the do something function and I'm going to log the value over here. So let's go ahead and execute the function. So what I do is I save the script and then I need to actually reload the script. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to unload the script and then I'm going to load it back again. We need to do this because I just saved some code, some changes in the script. If I don't reload the function, then the function that is loaded is actually the older copy. So now when I execute the function, do something, I can pass in a parameter. There we are, do something some var, which is exactly what this log line does. Controlling the script via if statements and while loops is exactly like JavaScript. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me just add an if statement over here. I'm going to add that if the param1 is the value f, uh, we are just going to lock the word stack. Let's go ahead and execute the script. So when I save the script, I need to unload it. So let's just unload it. I need to reload it again. And then now when I execute the script, I'm going to execute it with the value f. There we are, we get the word stack. If I execute it with any other alphabet, I don't get anything. That's because the if statement is skipping if it's not the value f. Now executing log lines is all good. But how do we execute a command back into WinDebug? So to execute log lines back, I'm going to add another lambda over here. I'm going to call it WinDebug. And what this does is it takes in a string. I'm going to call it command. And it calls host namespace debugger utility control execute command. What this does is it will actually execute this string into WinDebug and the response will be written by this function. Let's go ahead and enhance our do something function. So let me add the WinDebug over here. So what we have is we call the WinDebug function with a k. k is just to get the stack. However, when this function runs, the execute command runs, there is no actual output within WinDebug. What this function will return is a list of lines that would have been the output. So what we do is we get the result of the function. We just iterate through all the lines and we log each line. Let's go ahead and run the script. So as usual, I'm going to save the script. Then I'm going to unload it. And then I'm going to reload it again. There we are. Then finally, when I execute the script with F, which is the if statement over here, it's going to actually show me the stack. So it's busy doing its work in the back. And when it's done, we will get a stack. The command took a while to run because the stack requires loading of symbols. We can't actually see the loading of symbols because it's running within the JS provider. But we do get the output of the stack over here. Each line was returned in that array. So when we iterated through the list of results, uh, we got each line, which is basically the K command. In a nutshell, that's how JavaScripting works in WinDebug. JavaScripting and the DX model commands is really in-depth. So I figured that I will make more videos in this series to show the power of JavaScripting in WinDebug. I am not used to using JavaScripting in WinDebug. I'm more used to using the native scripts that just run the meta commands. 
JavaScripting looks to be more verbose. However, it looks to be way more powerful because the DX model is really in-depth and you can really query for a lot of information from the DX model and from WinDebug itself. I will cover more of the DX model in future videos and let me know in the comments below if you have used JavaScripting in WinDebug. Gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon and give a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.